Good day, everybody. This is Dr. Ali McGibbon. And uh, together, we'd like to see band bass data transmission. We need this model. We need to model band bass data transmission to be able to look at the performance of digital band bass transmission techniques. So we'll basically mind you between the difference between binary, MADI, baseband, band bass, coherent, non-coherent, ASK, FSK, PSK, QEM. And these are different ways of classifying communication systems. So specifically, we'll look at the digital band transmission terminology. We'll look at power spectra. And uh, finally, we'll conclude with the bandwidth efficiency. If you look at the communication model, you'll find out that what is new here, comparing band bass with baseband, is the fact that we have modulation. So we have message source, then signal transmission encoder, and then we modulate the signal. That is, that, that is to say we're going to have a carrier. And with the receiver, we have to do the demodulation process. So digital transmission or digital band bass transmission to differentiate it between to differentiate between baseband and band bass. In baseband pulse transmission, data is represented by pulse amplitude, for example, or by modifying a pulse and transmitting it over a low bass channel. So the channel is a low bass, so the communication is baseband. Again, it could be PM, pulse amplitude, pulse width, pulse duration, or pulse position. However, in band bass pulse transmission, in band bass pulse transmission, data is modulated onto a carrier. So we have a sinusoidal transmitted way over, over a, a band bass channel. Of course, this sinusoid will be modulated, adjusted. Now, communication channels that use band bass without without explicitly saying get all wireless communication systems almost all of them we have microwave radio links if you say microwave it means you need a modulator satellite channels cellular systems the all all wired wireless channels are they are band bus in base band it could be low bus or band bus if we use a carrier if we shift the frequencies it becomes a band bus however if you say wireless it embeddedly means we are shifting the frequency. So the modulation process to modulate means you are involving a carrier and the carrier you can switch its amplitude, frequency or phase of this sinusoidal carrier according to the data. If you change this amplitude, phase or frequency, we have three basic types, amplitude shift keying, where the data 0, 1, 1 is represented in the amplitude. I'm sure this could be basics, but we need to recall these because we are going to look at the, the performance of digital communication systems, and we need to make sure that we understand the basics of the digital band bass transmission. So this is ASK. The data is represented in the amplitude, or in the phase, you start from the low phase or high phase. This is all the same frequency, same amplitude. What makes a difference is where do you start up or down? So that's the phase. In frequency shift keying, the data zero is represented with low frequency, while one, as you can see, is represented by a higher frequency. These are the three basic types. And I would like to know that in continuous wave modulation, it's not easy to distinguish PSK from FSK because they are related as derivative. However, because in digital systems, we'll have discontinuity in the phase. So we're saying here, note that in continuous wave modulation, FM and PM are very similar waveforms. But if you look at the digital side, we have PSK and FSK, and they are usually distinguishable because we have discrete phase change here. Now, I would like you also to recall that there are reasons to use PSK and FSK or ASK. So let's recall quickly some of the differences. PSK and FSK have constant envelope, which means their amplitude is, is constant. Power does not depend on the data. They are less sensitive to amplitude nonlinearities. So if there's a nonlinear channel block, they are less sensitive. And they are preferred over, FSK, over ASK amplitude for nonlinear channels, of course. Now, when it comes to demodulation, all these three types, these are basic types, and we can have 
combination but for the time being if you look at the basic types also we can also classify digital demodulation into coherent or non-coherent so when you demodulate if you require a copy of the transmitted carrier so the receiver is synchronized in frequency and phase to carrier wave use at the transmitter <clears throat> which means before you demodulate you need to recover the carrier that's called coherent we have non-coherent where the receiver does not require carrier phase recovery of course carrier phase and frequency they're related uh, so this is less complex but as you might guess the performance is better with the coherent we can also look at base uh, or we can look at different type of communication as being binary or MRE so what in, what does what does MRE mean if you use multiple symbols an MRE signaling scheme there are M possible signals S1 up to capital SM and use these signals over the symbol duration T capital T if you are representing things in terms of number of bits then the number of symbols that you transmit is power of 2 so we have 2 raised to power n when n is an integer number so we have m equal to 2 4 8 16 we go by the powers of 2 so the difference between m and small n capital m is the number of symbols small m n is the number of bits per symbol now if you use symbol transmission if if it's binary then symbol and bits are the same but in general m array the symbol duration will be n times tb so the duration of one symbol carries number of bits so you expect t without subscript to refer to symbol to be more than the number of uh, the duration given for one bit by a factor of n so we can extend ASK, PSK, FSK to MRE, ASK, MRE, PSK, and MRE, FSK. These schemes can be combined to get QAM, or we can have what we call amplitude shift keying, APK. So we have ASK, amplitude shift keying, phase shift keying, frequency shift keying, or amplitude phase keying. We can um, refer to a special kind of the hybrid modulation as QAM quadrature amplitude modulation which includes both phase and frequency variations across the symbols in digital bandpass transmission MRE signal schemes are preferred over bandpass channels with constant with constraint bandwidth because if you want to increase the data rate you are limited by bandwidth so if you can come up with new symbols that does not require additional bandwidth then that would be a good solution so if your, if your channel is limited bandwidth usually we are forced or usually we go into MRE signaling to increase the data rate what is the cost of applying MRE signaling then over bandpass channels you have to increase either the power or bandwidth it depends on which which uh, modulation scheme you're using ASK then you might need to increase the, um, the power or if you're using phase then you might uh, uh, are required to increase the bandwidth if bandwidth of the channel is less than, uh, than the requirement then of course we use uh, uh, MRE signaling schemes as I mentioned before and the examples of binary sequence duration would be TB if you are using um, PSK binary then your bandwidth requirement will be 1 over TB however if you are using MRE PSK and then you're going to use blocks of n bits to modulate m is related to n by m equal to 2 raised to 1 as we mentioned and the bit duration will be nt the symbol duration will be ntp so symbol duration will be uh, the symbol duration would uh, we can send we have to reduce tb or of course we need to reduce the product once you reduce the product the bandwidth requirement increase because now you need to send more symbols uh, in the given time so either you reduce tb to keep the bandwidth the same okay so in general we can adjust the bandwidth rate relation by the following equation bandwidth equal to the rate into 1 plus alpha where alpha is a role of factor r is the symbol rate 
Now, if you are going to use the bit rate, then you have to divide by n. So R B divide by n, which means we are reducing the bandwidth requirement by a factor of n. Now let me get this straight. You can increase if you use ASK, you can increase the power. We can use PSK to um, increase the data rate. So the price is either paid in power, bandwidth, or even just complexity. It doesn't have to be in bandwidth uh, or, or amplitude, like in the case of PSK. Probability of error. Now, remember that our objective is of stating um, or recalling this band bus basics, bus, band bus modulation basics or data transmission basics, is to know how we find the performance of different modulation schemes. So band bus data transmission systems over additive wide Gaussian noise considered optimum receiver design, will consider AWGN, will consider that we are minimizing average symbol error probability, unless stated otherwise. We're not focusing on the bit error rate. We'll focus on symbol error rate. We'll look at the probability of error analysis, which is based on signal space analysis for specific data modulation schemes like ASK, PSK, and FSK. So we'll use geometry. For digital modulation techniques, like coherent PPSK and binary FSK, we will be able to find exact formulas. That's what we're going to do in coming uh, lectures. So we can find exact formula for the probability of error. We know exactly what's the performance of PPSK and binary FSK. But once we go into MRE PSK and we have more symbols, then we will have to resort into using bounds because it will be difficult to come up with the exact form. So we'll use bound to approximate the formula for the probability of error. That's what we are going. That's the that's the the roadmap. Now, it's also important to understand that, that these techniques are not the same when it comes to power spectra. And uh, this is important because if you want to compare, you have to be fair. These two systems uh, in terms of probability of error, power consumption, and bandwidth requirement. So we're stating here that power spectra of digitally modulated signals is essential to determine the required channel bandwidth for fair comparison. And also, if you want to use multiple... Uh, signals, you need to avoid channel interference as you multiplex these systems. So the modulated signal in band bus is a shifted version. And uh, since we have two orthogonal signals, the cosine and sine, we can think of one transmission allows you to send two signals. So we can have SI in green, the baseband N phase component, and we have the quadrature component. In our terminology, we're using minus sign here. Uh, we can also use this as a complex envelope. So what is the blue signal S? The blue signal S is made of uh, this complex uh, concatenation of the real part and the imaginary part. So we are saying our complex envelope or our baseband equivalent signal is in fact made of two signals. right? And recall that the exponential angle can be uh, expanded into cosine plus J sine. So when we multiply, when we modulate, we multiply the signal by the carrier, j into j give you a minus sign, and we get exactly this expression. So modulation means multiplying by this complex uh, exponential, in our case. So what we transmit, the signal that we will transmit is, the modulated signal is S, the black one. So what is the blue signal? It is the baseband equivalent, the signal that's equivalent, but not modulated, not shifted. And then what is the green and the, and the red part of the signal? These are the components of the low bass signal. So the M phase and the quadrature components. So let's call this S tilde as S sub B to, to refer to the baseband equivalent. So what, what we are doing in, base, in band bass communication is in fact we're sending this signal on this, this spectrum, power spectrum. But the equivalent is this signal. Please note that when we shift N frequency, we used to have a, a factor of one half. Multiplying by cosine give you two images shifted to the right and to the left. But now because we are dealing with power, and power is proportional to the square of the frequency, so the signal in baseband is related to the power spectral density of the baseband by the following equation. 
it will be shifted to the right and to the left to the carrier frequency the bandwidth will be doubled and the factor is not half the factor is going to be one fourth for our notation the reason is that we are dealing with power spectral density and not uh, the amplitude itself so it is sufficient to evaluate sp we'll, we'll deal with the base band we'll, with the base band signal instead of dealing with the bass band so it's irrespective of the specific frequency so this is the relation s sub s is this frequency shifted version of the base band signal it's also scaled by a constant factor now we, it's important to, to, to introduce a terminology called bandwidth efficiency it's not the bandwidth it's rather the bandwidth efficiency so what does that mean spectrally efficient modulation maximizes the bandwidth efficiency in the communication system we want this quantity to be maximized it's a good quantity now what's bandwidth efficiency for communication systems bandwidth efficiency is the ratio of data in bits per second it's the data rate but relative to the bandwidth so the unit for the data rate is band uh, bits per second so we would like to effectively utilize the channel so the unit for the bandwidth efficiency will be rather bits per second per hertz systems are designed selected to achieve larger bandwidth efficiency for minimum power requirement or the minimum signal to noise ratio I want to improve the bandwidth efficiency for every single of hertz given to me I want to have the highest data rate so I want to minimize the bandwidth required or maximize the data rate so we call rho the bandwidth efficiency as the data rate divided by the bandwidth and I want this to be maximum so if this is large to, that's good I will get bits per second for every hertz so RB is the data rate in bits per second P is the bandwidth effectively is the effectively used ban channel bandwidth and rho is is the data is the power spectrum or, or the bandwidth efficiency now to conclude this let's look at uh, the bandwidth efficiency for different type of modulation schemes and later on when we address fsk gmsk pbsk qbsk and so on the different techniques we'll look at the probability of error for every individual one of them so it's good to know that they are not the same when it comes to bandwidth efficiency the bandwidth efficiency is affected by m array how many levels are you encoding so bandwidth efficiency depends on some factors not just the modulation scheme but how many levels how many symbols you are transmitting how many bits per symbol multi-level encoding block of bits transmission of information through the channel is based on block of bits and not a single bit so that's m array communication as you increase m you expect the bandwidth efficiency to change also of course the bandwidth efficiency depends on the spectral shaping so I can improve the bandwidth utilization by shaping the pulse and using the proper pulse shaping filter because smooth transition results uh, in less bandwidth requirements so bandwidth requirement is reduced by pulse shaping filters to smooth the sharp transition in transmitted waveforms so if you look at the table for example here if escape frequency shift keying just like in analog systems it is not bandwidth efficient so uh, it's usually less than one less than one bit per second for every given hertz gmsk uh, which 1.35 binary phase shift keying one as you increase the constellation in phase shift for example which is the number of level you notice that we are cancelling two bits per second per hertz 8 3 16 4 and as you as you go on it's log base 2 of uh, the number of levels so in PPSK even if your bandwidth is limited you can increase the number of bits per second of course you need to pay the price in complexity or power we also know one new technique which is OFDM orthogonal frequency division multiplexing which has a very high power uh, uh, spectral efficiency or bandwidth efficiency and this is the one that's used in Wi-Fi and many, many of the techniques so I leave it for you uh, we will go back to these modulation techniques we'll study their bit perform the, the probability of error performance and we know for now that they are not the same when it comes to other factors although we are focusing on the probability of error we know that they are not the same when it comes to bandwidth efficiency so I leave it for you to find out what GMSK is and we'll, we'll touch on this 
and uh, I will leave it also for you to find out what O of dm is. So you can share your answers. You can find some of the application of O of dm. Where is it used in our daily life? Some of the applications. And please type this in the comment section. I just um, search for a few direct definitions of GA. Gaussian minimum shift keying JMSK and orthogonal frequency division multiplexing. And hopefully we'll have time to touch on them. But for the time being, I'd like you to find out where of dm is used, some real applications and share this in the comment section. Thank you for your uh, listening. And as I say, this is kind of quick review of digital transmission of at the base, uh, at the band bass uh, transmission. We'll see you in coming videos and thank you for being good listeners.